I've never seen an abuse of a flat screen TV executed in a way that Adam uh, that, that Adam Sandler did during that <laughs> final scene. Hello everybody, this is Last Minute Movies. I tested negative with COVID like 30 minutes before the New Year's, so I feel still a little zombified. He's but, dying. Yeah. Uh, we're here in 2022, um, and we're watching a movie, we, we're discussing a movie that breaks down the anatomy of scumbags in modern society. Yeah. And surprisingly, it's not a film about politicians. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I didn't see a single politician there, which is odd, because, you know, scumbags and all. There, this scum, yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> all right, uh, yeah, we're talking uh, Uncut Gems today, folks. A uh, film that came out 2019, I want to say. I actually just, um, so actually, it's funny, I suggested this movie, we have like a list, so I'll give you a little bit of background on last bit of movies, like the, you know, behind the scenes of it. We kind of like... Every, what are you going like, to tell them every, now? not too much stuff but i'm just gonna say that like you know you'll suggest a movie to review or review it then i do then you do then i do so this is the one that i suggested that we do and it's interesting because um i'm in a class where i was in a class last semester um it was uh, directing the actor right mm -hmm. and a bunch of us chose scenes from like films and we casted actors and we had to like play with the direction of it. We had to set up charts, we had to break it down and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. I chose the notebook, but one of my uh, classmates, he chose uh, a scene from this movie and I really liked it. And my teacher really, really liked it too because he loves the movie and I never seen the movie before, but he suggested that I like watched it on all that. Cause it was like, he said it's probably one of the best movies that's come out like recently. And I'm like, okay, I guess I'll have to check it out then. So I recently like watched it and he was right. <laughs> oh yeah. It's a day of good fucking film. No, the, the, the film slaps. Like, I'm not gonna lie it to does. you. I, I wanted to shower for like all of it. I was just watching not it and like, I'm like... Not on a different showering than like Rise of Skywalker shower. Yeah, yeah, very, very different. Because like <laughs> this one, you're actually invested into the plot, but you're looking yeah. at the character prototype that just doesn't adhere to your own values in yeah. any sense of the word. And it was done that way deliberately. So I love those kind of stories. It, it's so like uh, Soprano-esque where you're like watching it and you're like, God, these people are just awful, but you like can't help but like kind of love them and think they're sort of endearing because they're so bad and terrible. You're absolutely it's just, right. It's, it's a different level of evil in The Sopranos, but I still say that it's like <laughs> a similar kind of feeling. You're absolutely right, except like writers who write those kinds of stories, they bear their responsibility of not fucking it up. Because in the end oh, yeah, of the day, you can, it's so easy to just lose that, you know, the balance and make a story that justifies scumbag behavior. And it's like, yeah, exactly. you know, it, but but this movie, right? Why, why is it good? Why are we even talking about this is because it's a scumbag behavior. But instead of it being just scumbagish, it paints it in a very realistic tone. So like, mm -hmm. this is just the world we live in. And to yeah. me, that worked perfectly because of all of these things that you, you assume and you associate with them immediately because you're like, of course they would do that. Of course they would want 20 grand. I would absolutely want 20 grand. The, the yeah, yeah. problematic part is here is that everyone is trying to chase quick gain instead of trying to build something with integrity, you know? And, yeah, and that's kind of all there is to the movie. Or anything like that, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, it's, and it's just one of those interesting things. So um, we're not, and we're gonna not do what we usually do, where we, re, we recap the entire plot. Mm -hmm. We're gonna more so kind of just talk about specific moments in the film that we liked. However, I think before we do that, and I think before we break down these scenes for you, I think there's something that you guys need to like kind of understand about this film. And I think the most important thing about this film um, is the fact that when you look at the plot and you look at these characters i think so recently there's this kind of been this narrative going around uh by some i'm not going to name any names but by some youtube you know movie okay video essay people and all of that and they're saying certain things like and even some filmmakers who i actually really respect are saying certain things that like plot doesn't matter and that movies why do you are respect about, them like, well, for what he made, <laughs> not the video essays, 
the filmmaker I respect. I don't respect the video essay people, but um. Yeah, they don't deserve any saying, respect. Fuck video they, they essays. Don't, yeah, we don't exactly. matter. Exactly. Looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but but I think it's important. But but I think it's important to mention because they say that, you know, it the characters, the feelings, and the emotion are more important than like the plot. And I just think. And I hate to be kind of harsh here, but I think that's kind of garbage. He was doing a disservice to your audience when you say that. Like, if I were to say that, like, I would be disingenuous and be giving a disservice to you guys. Mm -hmm. So I think it's important to note here that this is an excellent film that both blends character moments and plot together in a really, really good way. You know what I'm saying? So Yeah, yeah, I, I see think, exactly what you mean. You know, because we have a specific situation here where there's this guy and he's doing all these different things, but his character flaws are servicing the plot and the plot is servicing his character. It's a perfect blend between the two. And we're gonna talk about that more so as we talk about the scenes, but I think this right here, like if you're gonna, if you need an argument as to why plot is very important for a film, if you're debating someone, link them this video so with that being <laughs> said <laughs> let's talk about um let's talk about some scenes what makes the film truly shine for me is the final scene where um arno and uh, the the two bull guys he brought with them who we've been watching throughout the whole movie are locked in a glass cage watching adam sandler having like you know the literally experiencing the highest high that he could have had and to me like some con wait real quick uh -huh. look, sorry some context for this uh the people that he's talking about in the scene like arno and all that they're loan sharks and they're More trying to less. go after the debt which um howard has he has like a massive debt and he's uh, yeah owns these loan sharks and they're trying to get it uh he ends up giving money to somebody else julia his girlfriend in order to like you know bet to on, bet on them. something and they're here yep. to collect it and they're like wait we need to go after her and he traps them uh so yeah, it's just the the, the, the shitty <laughs> thing about adam sandler's character which actually directly feeds into it like the main shitty thing about his character that he just does over and over again this very uh very simple you know uh fatal flaw thing with like the basic mm -hmm. basic bare bones his fatal flaw is that he owns people money and when he comes across money instead of paying them back he bets them in hopes that they're gonna multiply and all of his problems will go away which is fundamentally fucked up and nobody should ever do that because gambling is a problem and it's an addiction in that last scene we basically see him prevail in fueling his addiction and getting the fix so when those guys are locked in the glass box sitting next to him while adam sandler is abusing that tv while watching a baseball game um yeah. like we are basically experiencing him go through the highest high he has ever experienced in life and uh like because he is killed as soon as he wins big as soon as he basically becomes a millionaire it felt to me like a heroin overdose because it's the highest high followed yeah, by that's death exactly what it was yeah no that's totally what it was he like basically if i mean you can't od from gambling because it's not like a substance yeah you can he literally it. that's what happened to I him mean, though yeah, he od'd I mean, on yeah, gambling like, <laughs> he yeah, owed too much and happened. he got killed you can't literally od on it though but like yeah and like that sort of like existential like Ooh, you know, filmmaking way he like OD. I'm kind, I'm kind of glad that the movie ended like that. Like if it would have just been like, oh, there you go. I mean, I guess you could have. I don't know. It's interesting because I could see a way in both worlds where like, let's say if he didn't die and he paid off the debt and then just went on, the moral of this like he doesn't change, he doesn't learn anything, and that's like a bad thing, like almost ominous. Mm -hmm. But him dying, I think also sir. Like I, I would have wanted to see like. They probably didn't do it, but if they had like two different endings, I would have loved to see like the two different endings, <laughs> kind of like in a way of like Get Out, you know. Or or I, uh, or I am Legend. Then, like the... I am yeah, Legend. Yeah, yeah. Alternative ending slaps compared to everything we saw before. Oh, yeah. uh, check it out if you haven't. Uh, that butterfly moment is amazing. Uh, so I was gonna say, you know, about that ending, that death in the end. I would not like I would. Yeah, spoiler alert: He dies in the end. I would probably <laughs> refuse to break this movie down with you on the channel if that wasn't the ending. Uh, for one yeah. reason only. There was a point in the movie he would do um, where I wanted him... He listens to me. <laughs> uh, 
uh, he... Th there's a point in a movie where I wanted him to be beaten up. I never, ever before in my life was watching a movie and ever wanted violence to occur so bad <laughs> he to got the main that, character. Though. He got the shit kicked out of him for like... Uh, more or less, scenes. <laughs> more or less, it's just like, you see, uh, it was shortly after the scene where he um, uh, leaves the, the theater, right? He, like, starts yeah. talking to them, and he's in a car, and Arno is in the front seat, it tells him not to talk to him. And then Adam Sandler goes like, I bet your money, you're, you know where your money is, I bet them! And he, like, talks about it like it's some genius thing, but that's literally the problem. And, like, Arno has heard it 3,000 times from him. Yeah, and uh -huh. they managed to package it in such a scumbaggish, frustrating way that I'm like, I don't care. As an audience member, I'm okay if they kill him right now out of spite. That is, like, totally earned with a power dynamic and the plot and everything else. Which is why when he yeah. kills, gets killed in the end, like, you're absolutely thrown off by it. Like, this movie is an emotional roller coaster, and that is the most successful thing it has accomplished in being that bipolar swings from you being extremely happy for the main character, because, like, finally this nightmare is over, or at least seemingly, but then the next moment, or the moment directly prior, you're like, I fucking want this guy to die, what a fucking piece of shit he is. <laughs> uh, I, I think the reason why the moments are... Or we have to talk about some of the other scenes that happened before. I know, mm -hmm. you love jumping right to the climax. Yeah, I'm sorry, I couldn't, I <laughs> no couldn't fun. resist, like... No. No pun intended. He just blew. You just blew your load immediately, bro. Just hey, I, I had to let it out. That's, how That's it goes. that scene is you, the you highlight. Gotta, you gotta build it up. You gotta build it up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I think the reason why um, the moments are so earned is because of the fact that like he actually can pay off his debt, but he just fucking gambles it away. Yeah. Like, so, so it's the fatal so, it's flaw, so, right? It's so interesting to see because most movies it would be a situation where the climax of the film actually happened in the beginning mm -hmm. and the rest of the film is about him learning his lesson being with his family and then paying off his debt in some sort of like and then failing at it whatever. miserably no 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 i mean like if i'm saying most movies if they were doing it they would have changed the order the way it went which kind yeah. of would have changed the narrative of the film yeah, 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 yeah but this film has balls because it decides to say fuck all that shit we're gonna have this character who goes through all this shit beaten up you know alienated from his children mm -hmm. estranged from his wife mm -hmm. about to divorce her you know yeah. Um, yeah, 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 having yeah. troubles with his girlfriend who may or may not be cheating i still don't entirely bro she was gonna was hook up with, with weekend while doing coke yeah, she had a full sure, fucking right? right to do 100%. that 100 like uh, you know I mean, if they were slightly healthier if the communication was better you know, she would have just I mean, hooked up so with The weekend and have an awesome story to share with him while they're fucking. I wouldn't mind that. I think I that's know. cool. I, I it's fucking weekend, dude. Though. I don't think it's how. I don't think you're Howard, though. I think you're very different. Oh, no, I'm not Howard. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I, I don't know if I'd really like that either. My point is, is that we see this guy go through basically hell. And we mm -hmm. see him, like, breaking down in front of his girlfriend, Julia. Who, can I just say... Oh my god. She's fucking like, hot. I, yes. Dude, dude, <laughs> she is I, I shit you not. Like, I guess the reason why I'm looking into their relationship that way is because, to me, even though that closet scene is supposed to be like, I think that it was, was framed as something perverted. The best scene of the movie. But it was the cutest thing I've fucking ever seen. Like, he's hiding in the closet and it's like, it's sexy and she's fucking hot and she's wearing hot stuff and he's there and like, I don't know. It's, they, they seem like an extremely sexually happy couple to me. But that's yeah, like where that it was, starts and that ends. Was like a, that was kind of like a moment where you actually. That was like it's. You know, it's funny because I was wondering like, okay, why is this scene in the movie? Despite me, the movie trying to convince me that I need to somehow wife uh, Julia Fox, the <laughs> actress. <laughs> but I was like, oh, this is like one of the rare moments where like Howard. We can see Howard is actually doing something positive with his money and something positive with an actual really? human being. He's jerking well, yeah, off because... in the closet while texting her. Well, he wasn't actually jerking off. He was just texting. Her. Well, yeah, I know, but you know what I mean. <laughs> I know what you mean. Yeah, but I mean, like like you said, it was kind of like a cute relationship thing, yeah. like sexually healthy thing. I'm just saying, like, out of all this toxic shit that he's done in the movie, this was, like, the one yeah. moment of human connection that seemed yeah, yeah, yeah. somewhat pure. You know yeah, what I'm like, saying? Like, like a, an actual moment. And that tells you... see through the real Howard. I agree. Know, but, I agree. And that yeah. tells you more but, about how bad of a character Howard is and how irredeemable he is. 
because you're, the yeah, only like him, time where he is genuine is when he is aroused, you know? <laughs> like, th yeah, there's exactly. nothing else. And that, br that brings like me I to said, the... Like I said, very Tony Soprano-like. Facts, facts. And that brings me to the next... Uh, a really impressive thing about this film in the writing department that I just really enjoyed. That character yeah. had no redeeming qualities. And I think there were beats where we kind of yeah, almost thought he did. Thing. But he's a piece of shit all around, and that's why, like, yeah, exactly. You and know, that feeds exactly into what I was about to say, which mm -hmm. is like, dude, this guy, he goes through hell, and we think he's finally gonna pay off his debt because he finally fucking has the money because he yep. sold the old old to Kevin yep. Garnett. But then he gambles it all yep. away. <laughs> Literally, it's like, no, he, he does it in front of <laughs> him know? too. He does it yeah, in front exactly. of KG, and honestly, I actually yeah. really, really like that scene. Because he literally looks KG in the eyes, like you know the one guy whose yeah, the uh -huh. plot was sort of based around for the last hour yeah. of the movie. He looks him in the eyes and like, hey, I'm gonna introduce you to yeah. this addiction I have, and I'm gonna prove to you that you're kind of doing the same thing. And yeah, then we're and gonna bet, <laughs> you know? Exactly, and it's and that scene, in my opinion, because actually it's funny that Kevin Garnett scene and uh, with Howard when he's telling him about his addiction and all of that. That was actually the scene that my classmate chose uh, to do in our <laughs> class. And, and, and although I think that the scene that comes after, more after, when he's like, you know, watching the game and all of that is probably the best made, like when it, in building up tension. Yes. And uh, like the editing and all of that, I have to say that I think the actual best, like the best written scene in the movie is probably the scene between him and Garnett. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's a great thing because, um, you know, it can, and, and just one more thing. Can we talk about Kevin Garnett? In a Dude, second. That guy can fuck. That guy can act. Wait, bro. yeah, yeah, he can't. But like, I, I got to tell you about that scene you were talking about. The reason why you yeah. like it so much is because just like the closet scene, it shows us yeah. a very genuine place in uh, Adam Sandler's character. It's full of shit. It's ultimately toxic. Nothing about that him. trait it's is him. good. But it's him in his true it's face. his full self, mm -hmm. exactly. Like, I'd say that's probably, like, the most we've gotten to see of Howard from, you know, at that point of yep. in the movie. Whereas before, he's kind of torn between a lot of things. We just see him, his addiction, and somebody who represents a positive side of Howard, who he could be if he got rid of his addiction. Yep. And it's interesting to say because when we talk about, you know, like I said, Kevin Garnett uh, is a great character in this movie. Like, I think, um, I, I, I think their characters are so good, the two of them together specifically, because Kevin Garnett represents everything that Howard isn't. We see how Howard is in debt. We see how he's unfaithful to his wife. Mm -hmm. We see how he has like, even though he's technically supposed to be a man of faith, he's supposed to be, yeah. you know, he uh, believe in Judaism. His true higher power is that of gambling and yeah. addiction. Yeah, 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 yeah. And we see Kevin Garnett is the opposite, where he's very, very. Both of them are wealthy, but he's very wealthy, obviously, because basketball mm -hmm. players are fucking wealthy. NBA <laughs> players are rich as fuck. And he's tall. He's handsome you know and he has this opal and this opal is like his higher power yeah whereas um howard is somebody who utilizes gambling in order to feed into his emptiness and his addiction and all of that sort of stuff in an mm -hmm. unhealthy way and it's very destructive in both his family and his finances and all of that we see how kevin garnett has this opal where you know he's really looking seeing deep inside of this opal and it kind of reflects on him so when yeah. he's having trouble with the games and stuff like that he's looking at this opal and he's saying this thing inside is beautiful it's magnificent and all of that and he feels inspired because he wants to bring the best out of himself hence why whenever he has it he plays beautifully whereas uh howard's yeah. character only sees it yeah, yeah, for yeah. money that's all he sees it as he doesn't see the opal as something deep inside he just mm. like he almost it's almost like a piece of ass like when you see like someone walking by you're like god damn look at that booty <laughs> you know <laughs> so you look, look at that booty you know what i'm saying uh, but but that's how he sees it he sees it like a piece of meat bro he's not actually looking this sounds so weird but he's not looking at it in its character and it what it is as a whole you know he only sees the potential that he can benefit he only from. sees the potential yeah and yeah. i think that and the commentary there is uh, it, it i think it's really like it's it's really well written um 
and then that was just a, such a great scene because it basically like showed that off and it and it showed off like you know the fact that it like i think it's almost you know how like a lot of stories were ha- are kind of do the whole we're not so different thing you see that in a yeah. lot of superhero stories yeah, 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 and yeah. i think it can be done well in superhero stories like batman and the joker daredevil kingpin in the netflix show more yeah so um But I have to say, well, also in the comics, but I have to say that I think this is the most refreshing take I've seen of it because they really are the same person in a lot of ways. They just choose to utilize their mm -hmm. strengths in different sort of ways. Mm -hmm. I see your point. Sorry, that was long. (laughs) But you see how that makes sense in Adam Sandler's perverted gaze in the movie? Yeah. But that doesn't, like, like, I think that ultimately means that it doesn't because... And hear me out on this. Like, it's the language mm-hmm. of the movie. The movie itself was not taking KG, uh, but, you know, he yeah, has step to. Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, uh, yeah. yeah. I guess that my, my, my uh, the point that the film is trying to make here, and that was, I wanted to say that before we talk about the glass scene, <laughs> um, it yeah, feels yeah, yeah, like... Yeah. No, we're going to keep talking about this scene a little bit more. Yeah, the movie is trying to give us an environment where scumbaggery is encouraged, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, because that's like what New York City kind of feels like sometimes. You just have a bunch of people trying to hustle to make a quick gain. Oh yeah, you know um, and the hustle. There is no hustle like a New York hustle. Ex- exactly. Like they say if you can live in New York, you can live anywhere. Exactly. <laughs> and it, you know, you know so, it's just yeah. this can make you into a scumbag, and it basically shows that like yes, the world is fucked, and these people let the world fuck them and made mm-hmm. that fuckery their world, and and yeah. I think like that is the ultimate. Uh, tonal message of the movie is that you don't have to be that way even though the world that these people are in clearly says that you absolutely do because your body is a commodity your schemes are a commodity your lying is a commodity inflation of price is a commodity somebody liking a stone and thinking this is going to help them in the game is a commodity to profit from you know what i mean um, yeah, that's why I, I mean, felt like showering the whole time. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's it's weird because like I, I actually agree with you, but I sort of disagree with you on uh, KG's character mm-hmm. only because of the fact that I don't think it's bad to buy money for something that makes you feel good. I oh mean, no, 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 like, like I never said he was you know? disingenuous. Yeah. Uh, I merely wanted to okay, say that yeah. like money seemed to be the language that validated his feelings for me in the movie. Uh, not because he didn't feel genuine about the stone, but because the movie didn't feel genuine about anyone's feelings. I, still, I, I feel, I mean, I can understand what you're saying, but I also sort of disagree at the same time, only because of the fact that although, um, you know, he's trying to fight for it so hard he can with his money, he physically comes back to be there and buy the stone, the opal, sorry. Yeah. And kind of like what he wants to be with, he wants it. Like, I, I would say if he just wasn't in the rest of the movie and he just, or he just bought it and he's just like, I'll have my assistant pick it up. Mm-hmm. Then yeah, I would agree. But he actually physically goes there. We see like how much it means to yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he cares. Um, and, and I, yeah. And, and I just have to say like what I was going to say, like, you know, uh, Kevin Garnett, the real one, not the one in the movie. I mean, you know he's a great uh, he's good dude i didn't know he could act like that I didn't he know was how good basketball players can act like that bro. wait dude i actually gotta like, tell you uh the the scene in um like i think he really flashed out his acting in several points uh especially mm-hmm. when he was bouncing with adam sandler in the scene we talked about earlier like but i yeah. think that he did great there because he was able to bounce you know he he was given yeah, really good uh-huh. substance but i think the moment where he really really had his moment was uh the betting because he is like yeah. this extremely tall man in a room and he will like he is noticeable his head okay, is like yeah. towering above everyone else exactly and that's what we're going to talk about in the next scene of mm-hmm. the movie with the, with the glass breaking so. <laughs> yeah right yeah <laughs> but like you know i think in that scene his acting truly shined because he did barely anything he was just saying yes and no and he was like consulting well, he's such a physical presence obviously yeah you know? no i'm saying like you know he had uh, yeah you know what i'm talking about he had very little yeah, to exactly work with right about. say yes or no nod your head shake your head lean over to mm-hmm. your assistant and talk to her and he made it feel good he made it feel suspenseful yeah, I, and yeah, you know it, it, as a non-actor it, that's a lot <laughs> and and i think it just goes to show that like although i think acting is a very very hard thing to do i think you can, you don't need like all this like fucking like juilliard shakespearean level <laughs> training to be an actor i think it helps but i think most importantly is 
connecting. So what you, you really that, need like is Kevin good Garnett. directing. You what you, you're directing, but also like you need to have a good understanding of who you are and be able to draw from experiences. I mean, Kevin Garnett, for all intents and purposes, has probably never taken an acting class in his entire <laughs> life until maybe like this Facts. point, until this movie was around. But just like and and you I, if you know me i'm not a basketball guy at all in fact i think most sports are lame unless they're like <laughs> that sports oriented but that feeling but there's one thing that i can respect and i do know that comes from people being sports like being a sporty person myself is that hunger and that drive to mm -hmm. get after something that you want and that's what we saw within kevin garnett's acting we saw somebody who wanted that stone who would pursue it and he he and i'm and he's definitely felt like that his entire life with yeah all like he knows he what he wants shit right like that exactly and i think he brought that into this movie and it, it was yeah. great so what i was saying um in, the, the way in which film treats integrity is very interesting because it has two types of characters the ones that are able to enter certain spaces and ones that are not like there's so many moments where you mm -hmm. see adam sandler just you know, get busted by security saying you can't get through, no matter what you say or how you say it. They need him to calm the fuck down. You know, he he's not a calm person <laughs> uh, in, in the story. So, uh, I guess it, there's that moment where I think him and Damani are uh, getting to Philly, and uh, Damani ends up entering that space, you know. Not that as if that space has something sacred about it, but that space has integrity that Adam Sandler is just not allowed to enter. <laughs> because he has nothing of substance to offer. He came there to pick up something that he claims is his. But really, like, he doesn't hold any ownership or anything of anything, really, because every object to him is just something to wash and gamble away. So he doesn't see the value of any object, you know, uh, which, which basically, you know, symbolically means there's no substance to his character, which is why well, he's I not allowed to those spaces. And then we it, have... It, yes. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit. It's a little bit different, though. I'd say that he find he has values in um in uh, things like actual things. But yeah. when it comes to people, no, he doesn't really. Yeah, yeah. So he just sees people as a commodity. But when it's dealing with actually physical things that he can touch, he that's the only thing he finds yep. value in. Yeah. The only thing he finds value in is the opal. He mm -hmm. only finds value in the money and the watches and all that stuff. In the um, what's the word I'm looking for here? Um, the material is bro th that scene yeah. where he keeps checking if the opal is in the box even though he checked it two minutes ago that was yeah. great like adam sandler i'm just i just have to say it's so awesome to see adam sandler act as frustrating as his yeah, character like, is <laughs> as much as i hate his character for what he stands for his acting Which is a good thing. was that means incredible he good. yes yeah and, yes. And, and, i mean adam sandler is a guy like who i've been hearing people say he was a, he's a good actor i'm like no dude he's shit he's awful yep and i i will admit it i've said that and like fucking you know but look the movies he were in didn't help him i mean <laughs> yeah no. i think i think i don't think adam sandler's a bad actor as much as he's just kind of lazy but yep. when he actually like puts his mind to doing things like he's fucking incredible mm -hmm. and and uh and and specifically like the directing too in this movie i think is something that like really helps him have all those great moments because you know the safety brothers just brought it man they just did so good facts and and then the production value whether it be the cinematography the editing especially in that scene where the glass is breaking mm -hmm. you have all the audio all these people are talking at the same time that's so uh, hard to do dude so and many scenes have that though way and an like acting almost way. almost every I movie oh, oh sorry almost every scene in a movie has overlapping like characters yeah, speaking. Yeah, they all have that in this film. I love it. I love it it's so great. much. It, it's such a great way to like ramp up the tension of a room and stuff like that. I'd, I'd like to see more films do that. Yeah, because uh, it's like the whole and, world and, and, becomes and, a character, and and that's exactly. beautiful. Exactly, and it's and it's specifically a great setting because you have all these characters that are talking nonstop. And then the one character in that scene, Kevin Garnett, just staring at this opal, mm -hmm. he pops out so much more versus <laughs> a scene which had no one talking and he's not talking as well. But yep. when everyone's talking and he's silent, there's something special going on. That's yep. just a great, uh, from a production standpoint, that's really good. Yeah. That's that's good writing right there. <laughs> yeah. Like, it really is. And it, it just goes to show that this... Um, this film is just like it, it's just it's such it's so great because 
you know, there's so many moments where like the plot services these characters and, and you see this this film about this man who's like gambling his life away in mm-hmm. all intents and purposes and the plot the th- the plot of the movie, the overall theme of the movie is it, it co it is existing alongside this character yeah. with the opal and Howard himself. You see this opal where it's rough around the edges you look inside there might be something going on in there <laughs> but when it's actually valued among other gems it doesn't have that much value to it it I doesn't mean, have that much i it's feel like you're digging same. too too far into no, the but symbolism I'm behind the, the numbers no but i'm saying it's the same thing with howard's character he's a very uh-huh. rough around the edges kind of character he might if you look deep enough inside you might actually find a real person but when you weigh him alongside the other human beings in this world doesn't have much value because he's just a bit of a greedy fuck it's, <laughs> he, it's like him and the opal are kind of like i, I think it's, i just think it's a cool bit of symbolism there no i think that symbolism actually holds itself in a in a more um what's the word i'm looking for more like um condensed way in a sense where he is doing his best to sell this opal for more than its actual market value which is what he does yeah, with exactly. himself. Yeah. He has but no value. He has value. nothing exactly. to offer as a person, that's but what he's I was, trying yeah, that's to what get I, value. That's what I was trying to say is that he's trying to, like, he's a person, but when yeah. you weigh him among the other gems, like you weigh him among the other people, he has nothing of value because yeah. all he has is his greed and his money. <laughs> Dude, you know what you just know, realized? That's what I'm trying to say, yeah. You know what <laughs> makes him similar to the Opal as well? What? He managed to get to KG when he was gambling him through this thing. <laughs> The same way the Opal got to oh, KG yeah. when he broke the glass. <laughs> uh, I want to talk about the way in which film talks about spirituality. Because I think yeah. a lot of the spirituality that has to do with the Jewish culture that he is a part of, to me, it seemed like he knew what to do. He knew the ABCs, he knew how to read a certain text, he knew how to exist in the space with a tradition. But. Yeah. The only reason why he made it seem like he cares about that culture is because he's trying to maintain ties with his family who can help him monetarily. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, there is no spirituality in him. There is no um, appreciation for the family values in him, which actually brings Mm -hmm. it to Arno's character because they Mm -hmm. are so similar in so many ways and they don't even know it because Arno Mm -hmm. knew that his stepbrother is a piece of shit who is not reliable yet he still let in the money whether or not that was out of a good heart or not he took advantage of that he took advantage of his stepbrother's addiction yeah you know and and then and then he just perpetuated that cycle you know yeah and so literally like giving a drug a drug addict drugs like it's literally yeah and and then telling him not to do it and then telling him to get better you can't and then, and then and then like you know fucking and then getting upset at him because he has the addiction like, exactly right and if you think about yeah. it like I, I am no expert on uh judaism or the uh the belief systems but i know that uh you know it uh, there's definitely a lot of cultures out there that just talk about this whole notion that family is sacred even though if he's stepbrother they don't treat each other like family and um yeah, if, it's a great it's a great flip yeah it's a, it's a good bit of commentary there about what the film has to say which is why i think arno dying in the end is super important mm-hmm. too oh because, my god i didn't even think about that yeah 100 percent right because because that's their consequence of not seeing the value in family and only seeing it in money oh shit. because his You're sin right. is basically the same as adam sandler's yeah right they're both like that they both swayed off the path in exactly the same way and when he was like you know uh when he was confronted about his choices where there was a gunpoint to his head he was just like i have no strength to deal with this situation i don't want to be here this is wrong this is wrong you know i'm wrong but he was too far you can't like act like this for years in your life exploiting your stepbrother doing all of these scumbag things and then when the gun is pressed against your head for doing all of that when all of this ultimately comes together he's just like he's done he's done as a character as a person he gets killed because he committed the same sin that that adam sandler did and and when and when howard and when howard actually when you almost see a moment of arno being like oh my god he did it and him like maybe forgiving not forgiving the death but just being like well, wow you fucking did it dude but mm-hmm. he gets capped <laughs> in the yep. fucking head you know both of them do and and that right there guys 
That is why plot is important. Because you have a character whose theme is about value, him being an undervalued person in society, trying to find his value and all of that. And the plot is centered around gambling, addiction, and taking fam and family. And they come taking together. For granted, all of them. It comes together. You can't say that film that that plot and character and themes and emotions are separated from each other. Nope. We're supposed to utilize all of these ingredients to combine them into what is called filmmaking and storytelling. And they're equally important. Nobody and can prioritize one important. over the other exactly you yep. need to find it's not like it's like it's a recipe for like fucking like if if something is off if like one time i made pancakes right <laughs> and i it was great it fan fucking tastic i didn't add enough salt and guess what the pancakes tasted kind of off something as small as salt yeah adding into ingredients the mix is that important to the mix you know what else is important in the mix what uh character choices and there's yes. like this beautiful, beautiful scene. Uh, it's more like a sequence. And I think uh, Julia is kind of one of my oh. favorite characters in the movie because with the world yeah, view- she's definitely my favorite character. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, I, I like her not just because <laughs> she- great I mean, character. I like her because she's hot, but I also like her because of what happens in the she's end. She's a really good character, yeah. Yeah, like um, you see with, with the, the values that the film is establishing mm -hmm. us with, it's, it's all about money and Julia yeah. when she hooks up with weekend or tries to hook up with weekend and uh, when she does all does, of these toxic that was yeah like you know all of these toxic tendencies pretending to be sick all of this bullshit she's painted as a gold digger you know a character who will do anything just like Adam Sandler to to get by to get money and you know just in her in her world she's utilizing her body to do so and like yeah. The, the film is not hesitant to hint that that's why she's with Adam Sandler and that's why she's, you know, actively supporting that dynamic. Oh, she's a person who only finds value in her sexuality. I was gonna say that I think, you know, you know, in this character where she only finds, like, value in her sexuality and her body and all of that, they show that as a character flaw because it's really about... Like, we see her, like, saying, I like you, I love you, blah, 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 mm -hmm. using her sexuality to kind mm -hmm. of win over Howard. But the moment of the film where she's actually trying to appeal to his emotion and she's actually trying to be there for him and she's saying, it's okay, I love you, you have this, and blah, 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 yeah. blah, and all of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We actually are finally like, okay, this yeah. is what we care right? about. She's a person. Suddenly you know? there's something about her that will care. Yeah, so, so, exactly. You know, it, it's not that she sees her sexuality. It's about the personality folks it's i don't think it's her who sees her sexuality as her you know main commodity i think it's the yeah. world the world sees her sexuality as a commodity and they expect her to act that well, way yeah. and she actually does act the part in some ways but not in most so like when she sees adam Sandler beaten up on his low with his fucking nose bleeds and shit where she's at the store trying to fix their relationship with him because again and, and it is oddly materialistic because clearly she is you know subsisting off of him right uh which constantly just makes you question whether or not she's genuine but then she comes to him and she has a tattoo on her ass and that's a very disingenuous way of showing affection because that's problematic in its own but you look at it and you're like holy shit this is not about money uh in that particular instance it's toxic but it's not about money and suddenly she starts to support him and i'm like oh shit you know in, in the scumbag world she is in, this is the least scumbag thing to do, <laughs> even though it is in its yeah. own way broken. But then you see what yeah. I was what I wanted to say, her ultimate redemption arc that I think is beautiful is uh, shown through character choices. So she's told to go deliver the money and all. But as she delivers that money and places the bet, she ha encounters all of these other individuals who tried to flirt with her and try to hook up with her. This old man is literally all over her, um, you know, and, and the, the dude who talks to her like mid-sentence in the middle of that betting placement process, who's like normal looking, he clearly would try to get with her too. He's just more subtle about it. Like it's his levito project. I mean, project. would anyway not try to get with her? Exactly, right? The, my my, my, my <laughs> point is, honest, she is totally okay with utilizing the fact that the whole world sees her as a prize to get what she needs. And she's not gonna step out of the line and try to hook up with anyone that's not Weekend. Because uh, in, in, in her own way, she's faithful to Adam Sandler. And one can look at it and say, well, yeah, but that's because he's a millionaire and he won all of that money. 
So why, why wouldn't she be, you know, leaving him? And I agree with that, but that's the moral ambiguity of the film as a whole, which is the closest thing we get to a redemption yeah. arc, is, is that. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you everybody for watching. If you liked the video, like and subscribe for more. Check out the other videos on our channel, that's our, and that's also linked in the description and all of that. Uh, it's a new year. 2022 we have some we had a great year by the way that, for our first year that was awesome thank you guys so much we really appreciate the support we're gonna have another kick-ass year uh tune in for more later peace out everybody much love and don't gamble cut <laughs> cut <laughs>